actually pressed live when I didn't mean to press live. I meant to type in the title, grab myself more water. Anyway, I'm live. It's Sunday. Welcome to Star Surgery, here to answer all your decorating dilemmas. So um, if you have any, let me know. It is a very uh, kind of rainy day in London. We've had phenomenal weather for about, I don't know, is it a couple of weeks now? Just really beautiful sunshine. Yesterday was amazing. I was working all day, good morning, and uh, so I didn't really get to enjoy much of it. And then today the heavens opened. Through the night the heavens opened. And um, I'm being optimistic about the rain. I would say the garden are, is very much in need. It's, it's wet where you are. Yeah, I think it is wet pretty much across the country, I think. And I think we have a, although I had actually stopped raining. I recently found you and you're my new interior design inspo from New York. Oh, I love New York. Welcome New York. I'm coming back to New York in the not too distant future. Morning, sorry. Hello from India. I'm coming to India in about two weeks time. Morning, India. Gosh, I'm, I know, zooming all over the world. Um, and yeah, so it is a little bit rainy, but funnily enough, it's not as bad uh, as they predicted. What time is it? It's 11 a.m. British Standard Time. California, you are up super early. Uh, dark and rainy in Milton Keynes. Very wet here in Jersey. A good apartment sofa bed recommendation. Oh my gosh, Ness. that is something I can't answer because I've never had a sofa bed, but maybe our lovely community will. Hello from a windy South Africa. It's sunny in Derry. Morning from the Lake District. Morning from Scotland. Morning from Litchfield. Morning from Medway. Happy birth. Very happy with the weather yesterday, my son's birthday in the garden. Happy birthday, Joshua. Happy birthday, Josh. For yesterday, you had a lovely day. Cork, please come to Ireland. Haven't been to Ireland for ages. Even wet in Spain, is it? Durham, Ontario. Morning, morning, morning. Hello from Yorkshire. Damn in Essex, but warm. Hello from Sydney. Love Sydney. Welcome, everybody that's joining. Milton Keynes, India, 3.30pm. It's raining, but not cold. No, it's never cold in India, I have to say. Um, I'm all prepared for about two weeks time when it will be literally boiling. Morning from Edinburgh, dull in Dublin. Wow, hello from Holland. It's too wet for a garden question day, but I saw your beautiful wreath on your cabin in one of your vids. It's gorgeous, it real on made from faux. It's made from our faux. Hi from Manchester. Oh, you've got dry but dull weather. Uh, morning. From a very wet Devon, can you help? I'm painting my room black, but what can I do with a brand new white PVC windows? Oh, that's such an easy question to answer. First out the gate, you can paint it in a product called Zinza, which is Z-I-N-S-S-E-R, Z-I-N-S-S-E-R, and you prime it in that, and then you go over it in whatever color you want, and it will be look beautiful. Your backyard is epic. Thank you. Monsoon in Cambridge. Really, we had a lot of really wet weather this morning, or overnight, actually. Um, and this morning, and now, yeah, it feels like it's stopped raining, although it was supposed to, it was predicted to be raining all day, wasn't it? So it's a bit, um, hello from Germany, hello Germany. Um, my cold has just about gone, I've had the worst week of it. We hired a location to, to do a whole load of filming uh, in the week, and I lost my voice and could do virtually nothing. I managed to crank out one video, and I had 20 in the arsenal. <sighs> And as I began speaking, my voice got worse and worse and worse. And so I couldn't do anything. So annoying. I am a lot better. Uh, thank you. Yeah. It was a really, really big old cold. I received a tortoise pot this week as a present for my partner. It's super. I love the tortoise. Hello from the Midlands. Hello from Boston flying to San Francisco. Hello, Boston flying to San Francisco. Safe travels on your journey. Both beautiful places to be. Um... What was I going to say? Yeah, I think the temperatures for me, I think when I travel, I have such sleeping issues. And I think coupled with, you know, like it was 43 degrees outside and freezing inside in all the, in the hotel um, and meetings. So I think it doesn't really, it's quite, my body doesn't really respond very well to that. I constantly seem to be going to Asia and getting sick, but I think it might be the aircon thing. Do you have any experience with soundproofing ceilings when living below badly soundproof flat? I don't, I'm afraid. Even easier, just got Zinza all coat colour match and you can just, oh, amazing. Sunny in Holland, Indian summer vibe. We've had an Indian summer vibe all last week. It was amazing. Not a sofa, but for more of a footstool. Living it up, Alison bed in a box, great spare bed. Oh, amazing. 
Hello from an autumnal feeling Ramsgate. It's autumnal, isn't it? I've been making butternut soup. Uh, butternut squash soup. I can't wait to eat that in a minute. Will you be having the shaggy puffing cream back in stock? I don't know. It's not actually slated for production for next year. So at the moment, the answer to that is no. Although I do like that puff. I have to ask the team on the demand planning side why that's not slated for production but right now it isn't uh yeah this is such a good butternut squash recipe if you're interested take a butternut squash slice it in half literally straight down the middle scoop out the seeds sprinkle it with cardamom ter ground cardamom turmeric salt and pepper and olive oil and roast it in the oven for like 45 minutes to an hour while that's roasting you sweat down some onions some carrots and an apple you add some and sage leaves you add some bone broth or chicken stock or vegetable stock and then a whole pint of cream and then you smudge it all up <sniffs> that's what i love about that soup such an autumnal soup such an autumnal soup please could you recommend a color to drench a large cinema room in little natural light needs to transition to next one which is studio green oh i would go a lovely pickly color Pickly, pickly, caramel, burnt toffee colour would look beautiful with that green. Adding that recipe. Honestly, it's such an amazing recipe. I'm, I've actually batched it. So it means that I can, I've done two butternut squashes. So I can whack it in the fridge and have it for in the week. But it's so, th I, I hate really thin soup. I love really thick soup when it's you did a butternut squash yesterday with dollops of soft goat's cheese oh nice is a butternut soup from a certain recipe book you know what i found it online one second uh where did i find where did i find it so if you google bread and basil dot nyc spiced butternut squash soup so it's www dot bread a N D basil dot N Y C spiced butternut squash soup. So yum. So, so yum. I have to say, uh, seasonal cooking is such a dream. I love it too. I love frames with photographs, but I still don't know how to choose the right photos. How do you start? Um, Unsplash is a really good website. that has got lots of really beautiful photos on it that photographers have put all their work on and you can download it for free. So that's quite a good thing to have a look at. Just work out, do you want portraiture? Do you want landscape? It's really nice kind of mixing it all up. You don't have to go for one particular theme. I tend to mix a lot, although I don't actually have many photos thinking about it. Mostly mine are kind of oils or acrylic. Uh, what colour cushions and throws for a teal colour sofa? I would really dial it down and go, like, this is quite a lovely colour. I'm going to show you something I've been working on in a minute. This kind of, like, really, like, soft, greeny, browny colour could be lovely, or a calico. Have you tried immune from Leapfrog to supercharge your immunity? Find it for me when I feel... Mm, no, I'll have a look at that. Thank you. It really connects us to nature and the changing seasons. I'm so agree. I'm so with you with a thicker soup. Yeah, I can't stand any kind of watery soup. I don't know why. I feel like I'll be in an old people's home when I want to have that, you know, just slurp it down. But I just, I don't know, need something a bit thicker. One more question. When will you paint me back in stock? Is there a similar colour to your pickle? Working on it, February 1. It won't be the same colours. It will be similar colours. It won't be the same colours. Working on paint now, I get the first selection that we've mixed this week to have a look at because remember I haven't seen anything yet it's all conceptual so I uh, definitely won't be before Christmas I'm afraid sorry morning will you be getting your staghorn fern back in mm, no don't think so could you tell me what kind of things are a no in what way are you talking what do you mean in what what kind of things are a no thank you I usually make roasted butternut and chili soup oh that sounds delish it's nice having a repertoire of soups about to hand the drongo shade above my dining table but don't know how or what to place on the table any suggestions easy you could do one vase with some stems coming out of it it's all you need or you could do a tray of tea lights all you need you don't need a ton on a dining table in order to style it up you just need something so just one thing a vase and some stems beautiful if you can play around with a bit of height with the stems even better or failing that um any kind of uh plant or a tray with tea lights also looks really super beautiful did you get a new tree no 
Good question. I chopped the tree and it's still there in half. <laughs> and now I'm thinking I'm not going to get a new tree because I wonder if I can show you. I'm not sure if I can show you. Hold on, because I don't know if the internet will go. Let's see. I might lose you with the internet. But there's the quince tree. Right, can you see the quince tree? Oh, I love the smell of the earth. There's the quince tree. Right, so I haven't, we're supposed to take it up, but I kind of haven't. And the trouble if I put another tree here, I've decided is it might just cast too much shade. So now I'm thinking of pulling this over a little bit more, which is this great big mimosa, which I really love and then maybe planting something here and this comes out. Although maybe it just stays there and tries to regrow. I'm not really sure, but I've got to kind of address all these borders because I, I don't want to see one bit of earth. Like I was saying to the gardener who thinks I'm just so super fussy, I don't want to see one bit of earth. Like I don't want one iota of earth. She's like, but you're asking the impossible. You're, you're growing plants in a forest, like a forest floor. And I'm like, yes, I don't want any, Earth. I don't like earth. Do you know the first word I said as a kid? The first word I ever said, according to my parents, was dirt. I don't like dirt. I don't want to see no earth. Uh, so 100% out with watery soup. I know, it feels quite old people's home, me, doesn't it? I just can't do watery soup. <laughs> I have a small study. Can I cover all the walls with photos? It would be too much. The room has a medium light, not very bright. You can. I don't know if I would. Maybe I would contain them to one wall rather than doing all walls because it's such a look. But if you love it, do it. Blue diagonal stripes in the kitchen with a stainless steel sink and concrete floor, red handles. Do you think the blue will make it feel too cold? Yes, 100%. Because everything in there is cold. And I would really try and warm it up. Unless you're not feeling that it feels cold. But, you know, stainless steel is super cold. And diagonal stripes in blue are super cold. And red handles are quite strong. So I would really try and earth it up with a warmer colour. But if it works and you love it, don't worry. I don't know what to... I don't know what to put clothes to my TV on the wall or console TV. It's so classic. Any ideas? Um, you could put a vase. I mean, any kind of... I'll show you mine. Mine's actually on the wall, not the TV. But this is what I've done, right? Here's my console. So just imagine your TV's there. Any kind of vase is really pretty. A lamp, painting... You just need to kind of layer it up with a few things to take the eye away from the tree. Would you always paint the ceilings? 99.9 .9 times out of 100, I would always paint the ceilings, which gets me onto a really good point. So thank you for asking. The reason there's a point of where I wouldn't is we're about to revamp the primary bedroom. And the reason I love painting the ceilings is it makes the room feel a lot taller and grander. And yet in my bedroom, where I have this wooden wall, which I've had for years, I've really gone off the wood, I've really gone off the wood for some reason. And I'm now thinking I want to wood clad, not the same wood as on the wall, that's coming off. I want to wood clad the ceiling, which will make it feel lower because I want to feel more snug in the room. Does that make sense? So you can tell me what you think, but this is my idea. God, I don't know if this is gonna come across very well. Right, hold on, hold on. Um, right, so this is my idea. Let's just switch it around. This, I'm thinking, is going to be my ceiling. And then this is going to be where my wooden wall is, which is this grass cloth wallpaper, which I quite like. And then I've got to decide on curtains, so I'm kind of wondering about that colour. I don't know. I'm on the fence. This colour... Or maybe this colour. Quite like black. Anyway, I don't know. So I'm actually thinking of cladding the ceiling in this, grass clothing in this, and then I might do a really dark, might do a really dark curtain. But I'm not sure, because I kind of want that, I want the ceiling to feel lower because I want to feel snugger. And at the moment, I don't feel snug in that room. Um, a real fairy tree with a light canopy. A real airy fairy tree. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know if it needs to have... Um... Graham, can you write this down? Yeah. North... Uh, N-O-T-H-O-F-A-G-U-S. 
F-A-G-U-S, Antarctica. I'll have a look, thank you. It needs to be able to deal with a bit of shade. Can I buy your paint where I live? Can you recommend a similar color to pickle? I don't know what other brands are doing, sorry. I, I, I don't really pay any attention to what anyone else is doing other than what we're doing, because I just don't have the time. Sure, Var and Ball have got something similar. Or Zoffany. How long did it take you to get the wire hanging in the garden to get green growth? Oh, super easy, because we bought Mile a Minute, which grows a mile a minute in the summer. Um, God, two months, three months. Mile a Minute grows like crazy. It's a really invasive plant, and it's exactly what I needed it to do. And then um, it's interesting, actually, because I'm now growing the jasmine over it a bit more, which is a real slow grower. So I'm eking the jasmine along year by year and pushing the mile a minute slightly back. But if you want something really quick, mile a minute. A fig tree would be nice. No, unfortunately it wouldn't. I mean, I love fig trees, don't get me wrong. I have a fig tree in the front and I have a fig tree in the back. They take up a lot of water and their trunk is big. I cannot have a tree with a big trunk. It's got to be a super skinny, super skinny. So I'm not sure if I even need it, to be honest, because I've got that other mimosa growing. Um, and the quince, I think one of the reasons that the quince didn't do so well is the light levels. So I just don't want to go with another tree and have light level issues. And I also want the border to be quite lush, a lot lusher. And I'm wondering if it wasn't because of the light levels, which is why I'm on the fence about if I put a tree there. I'm half thinking of not if I can push the mimosa over a bit more because I've already got 14 trees in this garden, actually 13 now. Um, do you see? So I'm not sure, because sometimes you can just crowd out too much and then it just doesn't work. I want to create a cohesive colour palette, but I'm struggling to do that. The colour I love is olive green. What other colours can I use? Look at the colour wheel. That's a really good way of finding out what other colours go. But greens, just look at Mother Nature, you know? What works in Mother Nature? So beautiful browns work in Mother Nature. Also beautiful creams work in Mother Nature. Blacks work in Mother Nature. Um caramels, pinks, all of those colours look really beautiful. All of them. I used a nice silver pink wallpaper in my workroom. Now the room looks like a girl's bedroom. Do you have any tips to make it look a bit more adult? If you can ground it with anything that's black, such a grounding colour, that's why I've added or thinking about black touches in this room, which is going quite neutrally, because it will give it more of an earthy, sophisticated vibe than everything just being a little bit. So, um, you know, Blumongi because you know these are two lovely colors together. Yeah, they do look nice together. They're two lovely colors together, but sometimes you just need to give it a bit more of an edge or maybe a little bit more like that. Green is still quite nice. Anyway, haven't decided. Haven't decided. How would you design a very narrow hallway which doesn't get any light? Easy. I would uh, suspend, if I can, a pendant from the ceiling, even if I can't electrify it, to take the eye high. I would get a runner or a rug that has either texture or pattern because texture or pattern literally adds pizzazz and it makes such a difference to rooms. I would add a wall, I'd add a mirror to walls because walls, uh, mirrors bounce the light around and particularly at this time of year, it really is magical. And then any kind of shelf or small table where you can put any kind of light and if you haven't got a switch, any kind of portable lights. Talking of portable lights, sneak peek, sneak peek. How cute is this one? Coming in. Mm, in 14 days time. Oh, it's so sweet. It's in that really beautiful blush color. Love it. I love this lamp so much. Anyway, it's the perfect size. We've only got one in the company and I took it. Uh, we're waiting for the new paint range before we do our lounge. We have the lovely fog up three floors and I love how the color changes with the light. Will this quality be the same in the new range? Yes, otherwise I wouldn't be doing it, trust me. Small spaces behind a large L-shaped sofa in a cool and in color. What, what material dining room? Small space behind a large L-shaped sofa in a cool. What material for the dining room? Oh, dining table. Oh, I'd go a lovely walnutty wood color if you can. That would be nice. When is the best time to move plants around? Well, plants are good to move around in October and September when they've finished a lot of their flowering and they're going into dormant stage. So it's great, really great for pruning and moving and relocating shrubs and trees. So, um, which is why I'm kind of on it at the moment with what to do in that garden. Just received your forest green dusk and mushroom looking fab. Oh, thank you. Anyone recommend a cement product for very textured walls for my summer house? 
Let's see. Thank you for a fabulous day yesterday. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Had a lovely design class yesterday. Everyone was just fabulous. One more to go before the year's out. And then that is it for my year of design classes for 2024. Neptune French grey needs soft mossy green walls and ceiling. What colour would you paint kitchen cupboards? Mm, pickle. Caramel. Beautiful caramel. Uh, black for me, black for me. The first one is a winner for me. Interesting. Love the dark. All oh, the black curtains with that fab. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking black too because I think it would feel quite grounding. That was kind of my feeling as well. I do, f I do feel it could feel quite grounding, couldn't it? Um, I love all those colours for your bedroom. Very light shades for you. They are very light shades for me. They are. I feel like I just want to really overdose on texture. And mm, they are. And your glasses. Yeah, my glasses. My glasses are from Cupid's. Plus, uh, put false beams on the ceiling. Yeah, I kind of like this idea. This is like, uh, it's kind of, it's called a limed oak. It's for cladding for outside walls. And I want to put it on the ceiling because we've got a big chandelier made of mud in a cream. And I think they'll sit really beautifully together. That's my kind of plan. And I think it will make the room just feel a lot softer. That's my thinking. I have a Roman blind in that material. I know, it's lovely, isn't it? Look at Cirrus trees. We have quite a collection of those now. Oh, thank you. Um, hold on, I've lost everybody. Yee. Right, oh my goodness. Put for, right, black for me. I have a Roman blind in that material. Look at, thank you, thank you. Love the oak cladding with the grass on the walls. I know, and this, you can't see this, I don't think so much but it's got these gold flecks in it. Just, it's, re it's really warm. Because this is a lovely colour, but it's quite cool. So anything cool has to have double warm on it. If that makes sense. Uh, Pesciaranda to cover the earth makes every carpet a bit invasive though. Oh, I don't mind anything invasive. Oh, I have two may need another when it comes out. What light do you recommend for a north facing office? I need something bright that doesn't cast shadow and spreads the light evenly. I do a lot of crafts at my desk. What kind of light? I would go more for a task light, which we don't sell if you, if you really want to do crafts with it. Do you have any of your new Adelaide lights in your house that you can show us? I've looked on the site, but we're good to see in 3D. No, I can't have every product, unfortunately, in the house because my house is only so big. Um, Actually, do I? What? Adelaide's. Um, Wasn't I filming with them the other day? No, I can't remember. I think uh, you know what they are. The terracotta, the black and the white. Uh, be... They're in the boot, I think, waiting to go back to the shop. If we ask really nicely, Grandma. Can you? No, actually, don't worry, honey. Are you going to or are you not? Even if you find one. I hope it's not raining. Defo black curtains feels calming and more dramatic. Yeah, I'm thinking black too. I am thinking black. I've just got to get, I'm not deciding yet because I'm going to, luckily, can't tell you much about it, but with our new paint, I'm getting some samples this week and I'm gonna paint the bedroom in one of the colors, I'm hoping. So I just need to see how that color sits with all of these in order to work out what color the curtain should be. What is, the warm, what is a warm white for North Facing? I don't know, I'm afraid, because we don't have any, but lots of brands will. Uh, no to a tree, I'd add tall grass as a board of height. Yeah, I'm thinking I will not add a tree. What, what's your wall color there? Behind me, Madison Gray, but we don't sell it anymore. Curious why you switch from considering cork on bedroom wall. Oh, I love the cork on the bedroom wall, but the thing was, the cork had silvery undertones, and this has got cool undertones. So I can't stand cool colours, and I love the cork, but when I put it against this, I was like, I'm going to end up hating it because the ceiling obviously takes up quite a lot of real estate, and then the whole wall behind the bed takes up quite a lot of real estate, and it just, you know where you have to trust your intuition? I just felt it wasn't warm, and it would be coming down, and I can't be spending hundreds of pounds to then take things down again. So my intuition is like, I really want to warm the bedroom up, and I feel like this would, and the cork, I'll see if Graham can grab it when he comes down the stairs. Um, and I'll show you the cork was just had too much grey in it. And I, I'm not a lover of grey because grey is such a cool tone. Uh, add please a wooden rosette above the chandelier to find a vocal point which it descends and will also have the effect of bridging the slats. Yeah, I don't really want to do that, I hate to say. I 
kind of don't, it, for me, that would just be too much going on. I just want the chandelier to sit within here because I think otherwise it gets a bit fussy. Yeah, I'll show you in a minute why I went off the cork idea. Actually, you know what? Come with me. I don't know what state the house is in. What state's the house in? Oh, look at my new stair runner. I love this stair runner. Um, this is by Roger Oates. It goes into this great pot and then it goes into here and it looks so cool. Right, let me, have I got the oak? Oh yeah, I have. Look, I've got so many samples. It's a literal joke down here. Oh, spurtly guts. Right, let's go down the stairs. Look, see, it's not so bad outside. Oh my God, don't tell me the sun is coming out. That's literally insane. Literally insane. Right, let me just show you what I mean when I'm talking about the gray in the cork, because I like the cork. And what went wrong is I suddenly, I, I only had the idea of doing the ceiling last week. It's a new idea. Here's the ceiling. Here's the cork. I like the cork a lot. Let's see if I can hold this like this. Right, I like the cork a lot. I just feel it's too gray. And then when I do this, I just feel it's a slightly happier place than this. Thanks, honey, sorry. Although I do really like, do you see? It's quite cool. I go in and out of liking it. Whereas this is a lot warmer. See, this has kind of got great undertones. And that's what I think. Like, actually, wait there. I did this. I'll show you. Hold your horses. Right. This is a better example. So this, see how warm these two are together? And then this is quite cool. Although it's still nice. God. What do you guys think? I just feel it's a bit cool. This, it is still lovely though, I have to say. I'd really have to warm up everything else, like the bedding, if I was to go with the cork. Oh, now you've thrown me into a dilemma. Okay, cork's back in. Because I can't decide. I'm so... I don't know. I thought this morning the cork was out because it just looked too grey. I just feel it looks too grey. Hmm, as opposed to this. It just feels a bit warmer, not sure. Right, here's an Adelaide. Adelaide in black has lots of different points of light. This is the warm, this is the cool, this is cooly off. So warm, I like the warm setting the most and it looks like this. And you can shove it everywhere and it looks lovely. Thanks honey. Uh, thank you, Graham. Thanks. Is this how you spell Taslight? Uh, task. T-A-S-K. I went offline. Might have missed your answer. When is the best time to be? Uh, September and October because they've stopped growing. It's a good time. I'm on my way to Brighton and this keeps cutting out. I just heard you talking about trees and I bought a lovely one recently. And you know, it's a handkerchief tree. Oh, thank you. Uh, do you have any calico or creams in your new collection? Um, in terms of paint, paint colours, do you mean? Yes, a few. Thinking of using Millboard after your recommendation for cladding, Seaside House, have you used any of the colours? I've used Millboard in my bathroom. I've used Millboard on my decking outside and I'm hopefully about to use Millboard cladding for my ceiling in my bedroom. Love the cork, but prefer the grass. Mm. I do feel that I prefer the grass also somehow. Yeah. I love the cork, but I just think the grass might be warmer. I know there are loads of versions of cork, but I've looked at some of them and they just go too brown. And I don't want brown and then it goes too green. And also this bedroom has taken months. I need to really start, stop procrastinating and move. Like I've given myself November as the deadline because it's too much now. Like it's just gone on and on and on and on and on and on and it's just too much. Could you show us that picture on the wall behind you with the purple colour in it, please? It looks lovely. Uh, this came from 
This is from a Hong Kong artist. There you go. Huge. Your house is gorgeous. Thank you. Where's a large pot on the stairs from? Uh, we used to sell them. It's from India. Hessian wallpaper, grass cloth. La yeah, you could do Hessian. I just feel like I can't do any more choices now. I've got to like nail my choices. Love the wood and the grass cloth. What color is the wood? This is limed oak. They also do a gray one, but that's too cool for me. They also do a brown one, but that looks too fake for what I need it to be. And this looks quite a lovely limed oak. So I think that would be really nice on the ceiling. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Note the warm. Yeah, are you thinking? I love the cork because it will cocoon the room. Mm. That's so hard, isn't it? Not the cork. I like the cork. Cork or maybe the dark cork. I don't want dark cork. Not the cork. I'm not keen on the cork. Yeah. I think I'm going to go probably grass cloth. Worst case, I just have to redo it in cork. The cork is nice. I get nothing done. I know it's so hard, but you could add warmth with... But I can add warmth with cushions, but not... Basically, when you're decorating a room and the walls, the walls dictate the atmosphere. If I start going cool on the walls, no matter what I do, it would be really hard to make that feel cosy and warm. And that's my biggest fear with the cork. The ceiling is quite a soft, warmish, between warm and cool cream. And I just feel this is gonna take it down to too cool, is my feeling. But I could be wrong. Because I'm only looking at a tiny bit, it's really hard, isn't it? But I, I, I feel I might need to trust my gut. I feel also that you can't see this so much, but I wonder if I can do that a bit. It just, it's just got really beautiful gold flecks in it. The thing is, it's not the kind of wallpaper to go wrong on because it's like 300 quid a roll. So. Love the lamp, I love it. Can you show the new portable lamp that's coming in? Oh, holy moly! This is going on everyone's Christmas present. Two weeks. I love the terracotta Adelaide, it's beautiful, isn't it? I think I'm going to have to visit the store to decide between the black or terracotta Adelaide. Thank you, Graham, for fetching it. Prefer the grass to the cork. The grass, not the cork. There you go. Uh, when is your new paint collection coming out? February 1. Grass and cladding textures or tones definitely going to be the same party. I agree. Any burgundy dark reds in the new paint colour? Some deepy rusties, but not so much dark reds. I like the cork. Grass, not cork. Interesting. Uh, what does Graham think? He doesn't really mind, which I'm quite lucky about. He's kind of left it up to me. Uh, you were considering changing your wardrobes in your bedroom some time ago. Yep, all the wardrobes are going. So basically the plan is that we've got this fake wall with an open fireplace behind and the fake wall comes out and all the clothes come out. And all the clothes are now going into a racking system on the top floor, which will be the closet. So there'll be no wardrobes in the bedroom. So yeah, that's all part of the plan. Pattern of cork kind of fights with the wood grain. Yeah, I think grass cloth is softer. I feel I should just go for my intuition, you know? Will you be bringing out similar color to pickle? Similar, but not the same. I think you could get fed up with cork. Mm. I think I could get fed up with the grayness of it. Any experience of installing a living moss garden onto an interior wall? I like the idea it seems low maintenance. No, it's never really appealed to me, I hate to say, those living walls. I think they're of a time. I mean, do it if you want to, but for me, always, I've never particularly loved them. I don't like cork, absolutely love everything about your style and your house style, you inspire me so much, you're very sweet. When you have a stair runner and ordinary floorboards, what happens after the top step? Do you match the landing carpet to the stair runner or keep the runner going? Love cork and hessian. When you have a stair runner and ordinary floorboards, what happens after this top step? Do you match the landing carpet? You can, I haven't. So I'll just show you what I've done. So this, because you're kind of coming to a different zone and a lower ground, this is all this color, which is super, super beautiful. And it's got this really lovely edging detail. And then I didn't want, because I can't bear carpet, I didn't want anything on here because I've just got this lovely, huge mega pot. And then, um, then I go onto here and then I've put a little mat here and then I go into a whole other, oh look, this is, I have, this is gonna be nasty for me to show you this, but I need to, right, so it kind of looks like that. Oh, hello world. 
I'm just going to put this on the door. Look at this. If I can do it. Oh. Now, this is me being really mean. Oh, look, it's not actually that bad out here. It's actually sunny. Look at this beauty. I can't sell you them this year because America bought them all. But isn't that beautiful as a wreath? I so love this bloody wreath. And we've put more into production. But um, this now sits on my door, which I rather love. Right, now I'm going to shut the door. Okay. So, I hope that answered your question. So I've got stripes going up there and then this going down here. Does that answer your question? Go with your gut. Yeah, I know, I should really go with my gut. And actually, it does look like it's gonna get a bit sunny. So, that's always a good thing. The glass cloth wallpaper is from Jane Clayton. And the color is It's not cheap, it's like 380 quid a roll. Golden Gate T72868. She does lovely grass cloth wallpapers. Uh, I love my mushroom. Trust your gut, the wallpaper all the way. I can't wait to see the bedroom when it's finished. Thank you. I know, when, as soon as my design class is finished next weekend, I can start moving. Moving on the bedroom. How many rolls of poop? I only need two rolls. Because um, it's seven meters long. Really long drop, actually. Definitely trust your gut. I think so, too. I do. I, I definitely think trust my gut. I love the wreath. I'm going to love a big one. Stunning. Definitely trust your gut. Thank you. Wreath looks lovely. How can you give America all of your gorgeous wreaths? I know. I know. It's bad. Uh, because we have warehousing in America now because we have a whole wholesale business in America. And there was a bit of a mess up on the logistics. And the containers all went to the States rather than splitting. Hence the problem. Why can't you ship the canvas art on your website? Uh, oh, I don't know. To don't, work. Huh? To work. I love the wreaths and would love a big one. Why? America, wreath looks lovely. How could you go? Oh, I know, I can't ship. Why can't you ship the canvas art to your website in Europe? Contact customer services. We can. Uh, just contact her. Contact customer services at abigailahern.com. Customer services at abigailahern.com. Come, and they will sort it out for you. What's the colour in your front hall? Bedford brown. I made a big gold wreath this week. Oh, lovely. This cork is a bit cold and we're only looking at a small square. The ceiling is quite large. I agree. Glasses are from Cubits. They have this lovely edge. Do you see how it kind of flares out? I like these glasses. Uh, and they are from Cubits. So yes, that's kind of where I'm at with the whole bedroom right now. I feel probably the grass cloth would be nice. And then changing the bed. So many decisions. The bed's changing. The walls are coming out, opening up the fireplace. I've got to get some chairs in front of the fireplace. I want it to just feel quite snuggy. Snuggy, snuggy. Um, have a lovely day. Someone's saying they're going to run. Hopefully you haven't got rain. We haven't got rain now. I think it was a little a bit of a misnomer saying it's going to be like raining, raining all day, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's the carnival here as well in Hackney today and I can't hear any of it. And I was thinking, oh, I got all those poor people in their floats. But actually, it looks like the weather's going to hold, which is really nice. Um, but when it comes to um, decisions, like all of us, even me included, I think because when you're doing something from scratch, right, you're not just painting a wall a different colour, when you're doing a room from scratch and you have to make so many decisions, for me is like all the walls and the ceiling and the floors and la la la, it can feel a little bit overwhelming. There is a working fireplace behind the wall, which we used to use all the time. Um, India the monsoon has just left. Oh, also discussions about ideas for luxurious bed filling. Yeah, I need to change all the linens, I need to change the bed, change all the rugs. It's like quite a big thing. It's not just a, like a two minute thing, this thing. But once the design class is finished next Saturday, I can then start moving stuff around on the top floor to make more, you know, like we can actually begin. Cookbooks. Um, oh, one book I'm desperate to read. It's not a cookbook. It's more of a memoir by Nigel Slater called A Thousand Feasts. And I get his book for Christmas. He's written a Christmas book. I'll get it out again once we get a bit nearer to the the festive season but I read it every year because the way Nigel writes 
It's so beautiful. What was the Aussie, Aussie book? Chin Chin. Chin Chin is this uh, amazing restaurant I discovered in Australia. They're in Sydney and they're in Melbourne. And they do beautiful Southeast Asian food. Just beautiful. And I noticed on my Instagram feed, because I think I follow Chin Chin, that they've bought out, bought out a new recipe book. And I don't think I can get it on Amazon. And it's so annoying because all of their recipes are so delicious. So delicious. Um... The grass cloth, will you have the landscape throws coming in soon? Yes, 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 yes. Also, um, experimenting with a new, um, we've got these sheepskin chairs and we're sampling this sheepskin chair. And I was looking at it when I was in Shanghai, actually. And it's sort of got this belly. I, I can't really describe it because it's really weird, but it could be really exciting. Uh, my pleasure to find finally your work. Thank you. What do you think of green olive colour paint all over a sloping ceiling, apart from the wall of the bed, which could have a lovely floor? Lovely. I think that's really lovely. Uh, house is Victorian, 1860. Was the double height lamp? No, the house stopped here. House stopped here. All of this behind me, an addition, but house literally stopped here. So all of that I designed. Took out the back wall, extended and put the double height in. What was your interior design 30 years ago? Has it changed completely? Very white, very minimal, didn't have a style, didn't have any confidence, painted it white, quite minimal and didn't really spend any time here. So completely changed. Uh, your customer service team are amazing. They helped me source a second drawing in the same color. They are amazing. Thank you for telling me, I will tell them. Just bought myself a ninja soup and smoothie maker, making soup today, any regulations for soup recipe books. I don't know, actually, I look a lot online. So Bon Appetit, um, Anna Jones also is really good for soups. Donna Hay is really good for soups. I get quite a lot online. Mimless Baker is quite good for soups. She's also online. Can we please add clear pay because I could spend a lot more than Klarna. Hmm. Clear pay, put it on your notes. Mm -hmm. Love it, there's a great vision to design that living area. Thank you. I used to um, live in America by the Great Lakes and I worked for an architectural company that designed lots of glass houses. Uh, houses made of glass overlooking the lakes and it shaped my whole I didn't know it at the time but it really shaped my whole philosophy because that indoor outdoor no matter what time of year Michigan is cold in the winter um, I found so beguiling and so intoxicating that I knew that when I came back to London I wanted this very indoor outdoor feeling so no matter what season I'm in even in the depths of winter there's a great connection with nature and it just gives me such serenity do you know the history of your house who live there doctors there's a, a old hospital years ago which was built years ago and the doctors used to live in this house in this whole road actually um night just later the christmas chronicles that's it such a good christmas present now his new one a thousand feasts i cannot wait to read a thousand feasts and the christmas chronicles everybody who hasn't got it get it don't read it yet let the light go in october light some candles have a glass of wine and read that book but wait till the light goes it's so beautiful i can imagine the light must be so formative yes definitely clear play instead of klarna okay Clear play, please. Clear play, please. I saw your design class yesterday. Thank you for such an amazing day. Thank you for coming. Thank you for telling me. Everybody, yesterday was amazing. The day flashed by in, gosh, so quick. Suddenly it was 10 and then suddenly it was 4 and it was bonkers. But um, yeah, it's a shame that I'm ending them, but there's a lot of traveling coming up, so I, I'm not here much. Need advice, paint color for dark living room and cottage it small is a room with an open fire. Oh, lovely. Uh, how about a really beautiful brownie green which will really reflect nature that could be lovely interesting all the doctors live there have you seen any ghosts no i don't really have time to see ghosts i mean if they're around good luck to them i have enough going on in my brain other than looking out for ghosts but um i'd always say hi but no i've never seen one not really bothered about them they can just do their own thing if they're around i haven't really got a lot of time to entertain ghosts i have enough issues going on have a gorgeous day thank you uh thank you um what well, monkey is looking at me like he desperately needs to eat something uh, please could you remind us of colonel oh yes if you're in london this is the oldest bar in London. I must try and see if I can do a video. It's so sweet. It's called Gordon's and it's um, opposite the National Theatre uh, on the embankment. 
and it's there's no light and there's no windows and it's a cave literally a cave with candlelight and there's no choice of food there's a cheese board or a charcuterie board i believe you have different types of cheese boards. um there's no beer it's just wine and everything is lit by candles and it's quite mesmerizing uh the ghost might have an opinion on that and it's called gordon's wine bar and it's phenomenal and I took my parents there last Christmas. Um, and they take dogs. And they take dogs. And it's really lovely. It's really lovely. On a cold, blustery winter's day on the South Bank. Like you could do borough, walk along the South Bank, have a coffee at the Hoxton on the South Bank. They also take dogs, walk over the embankment, go to Gordon's, have a glass of wine, walk to Covent Garden, which is a really nice thing to do, and then scoot on home. Took your advice and painted kitchen cabinets the same colour as the walls. It looks like an entirely new room, and I didn't do it sooner. It's a bit amazing when things like that happen, and you're like, oh, that's why I'm so obsessed, you know, this whole paint thing has been a bit of a rigmarole, but why I'm so obsessed with paint, because it literally changes how you feel in a room. Uh, what can I do with a huge L-shaped grey sofa to bring the room up to date? It's jewelry sofa, cost a fortune, can't change it, but mentally it's like grey now. I think, don't worry so much about that, if long as you've got some, if you can potentially, and it might sound a bit rad, whatever colour your walls are, if you could make them warm, because grey can also be quite a grounding colour, right? It's just if you have lots of grey upon grey upon grey, or if you have grey with white walls, very cool tones. So if your walls could go a bit warmer, like a burnt caramel colour would be amazing with grey, and really warm it up, or you put like toffee coloured um, cushions and dirty pink cushions on that grey, could look really beautiful. You just gotta kind of really warm it up. I paint a living room dark green all over and have a mixture of lighting that still feels dark. Should I consider hidden up lighters for corners? No, you don't wanna light the corners of your room. Biggest thing, ideally, that you don't wanna do. You can do it in one corner, but you wouldn't wanna light all four corners of the room, and I'll tell you why. Can you see how I've lit that corner behind me with that big lamp, right? So when the light goes, you're literally seeing the edges of the room. And I was telling this to my design class the other day. When you don't light right up to the corner of your room, it goes into shadow. And shadow is such an important component in how we do a lighting scheme. And nobody thinks about shadow when they light their rooms. I need you to think about shadow because when you use shadow in your lighting scheme, you're creating a cinematic Tom Ford-esque movie scene that fills little pockets of glow that are really beautiful. So by all means, use an uplighter. I wouldn't use an uplighter. You don't really want the light to go up, you want the light to go down. So have a lamp in the corner where the light goes down because it's not cool light ever doing that. It always wants to do that. Um, I love Gordon's, I love Gordon's. I know I must go to Dennis Sever's house, especially at Christmas, all candle and dark. I must do that. Sorry, only just joined. Is there an update on the new paint? February 1. I hope there's a snug colour in your new paint. Lots. Silent nights at Dennis Severs is amazing. That's why I fell in love with my husband. Such a magical experience. You know, I've never been, which is really mad because it's so close to me, Spitalfields. It's like, like 10 minutes. Shadow rocks. Shadow always rocks. Do you recommend always having several lamps and lights on during the day? If you feel you need it, right? On a gloomy day, yes. On a non-gloomy day, no. So today is quite gloomy. All lights are on. Normally, if it's sunny, this is west facing, don't need the lights. So it really depends on how you feel in the room. That's a question for you. Uh, before is your husband, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't judge him. I thought, hmm, but I didn't judge him. Um, but I will actually do that, I know. Um, I meant to say smudge. Yeah, similar, not exactly. We can't make exactly the same colours. Amazing advice about shadows. So important. I can't really reiterate enough how important shadows are in a decorating scheme because if everything is... That's why I don't have a lot of ceiling lights, right? And all ceiling lights should be on a dimmer because ceiling lights emit a flat, general, ambient light. We don't really want that. We can have that if we're doing a task like cooking or grooming, but we generally don't want that in living rooms. We want... Can you see all the pockets of glow? behind me we want little pockets of glow and that is what makes a really beautiful layered lighting scheme not general light I never really have any of my no I'm lying actually I'm gonna say I never really have many of my ceiling lights on in the kitchen 
I have my recess lights on, but the beam is not a wide beam like this. I've purposely gone for the narrowest beam ever. So you get these pockets of spotlight, which also looks really magical. So also think about your beam width, getting nerdy here, to have really beautiful pockets. And so between them, there's a lot of shadow and that also looks really amazing. So shadow is one of the most important components when you're thinking about lighting a room. So you don't want all corners overlit. You don't really want to use up lighters. I feel like it was something that was in the 90s. We don't want to shine light up into rooms. Always want light to come down because it looks a lot nicer, if that makes any kind of sense whatsoever. But um, yeah, I should do more vid vids on lighting, particularly as the... Um, as we're transitioning into the cooler months and we're going to lose light a bit. I actually don't mind losing light, I have to say, because I just feel it's snuggy. I'm planning to a trip to Islington and Columbia Road for November. Any recommendations for boutique bolt holes would also be coming with the hound who comes everywhere with us. Do you mean boutique hotels? Gosh, I don't know what hotels take dogs because I never have to stay in a London hotel. Um, Hoxton, I think, takes dogs. And they're in Spitalfields. Mother Shelter might also. I'm not exactly sure. What do you suggest for very, very low kitchen ceiling lights a Victorian kitchen? Low kitchen ceiling lights. Well, you could do wall lights like over there. Can you see? You could do a pendant that hangs really low over an island. You just ideally don't want a lot of general lighting. You'll need it for, you know, general illumination, but table lights, wherever you can put them, are really, really key. I can't cope with the main ceiling lights. I hate fluorescent tube lighting. Oh my God, no. Love lots of warm and muted lighting. I'm so with you. Hotels, yes, yes to lighting vid, I'll do it. What do you suggest for very low kitchen? Answer that question, hopefully. Uh, which country is next on your bucket list? Um, it's not really on my bucket list, it's I have to go um, for work. So um, I have to go to India, and then from India I have to go to Hong Kong, and then from Hong Kong I have to go into China, and then come back, and it's like a 10 day epic slep, basically. Um, which I should feel quite excited about because I've only just come back from China. I don't really feel excited about it and I don't want to go. I'm now at the point where this year has been, has so much travel in it, so much travel. Australia, America, back to America, over to China. Then, I mean, it's just so much travel that um, I should be like, oh, amazing. And yeah, I don't feel like that at all. I feel like, I don't want to go, I just don't want to go. I feel like I'm constantly just in a plane. I hate planes. Also, I have such sleeping issues and then I get sick and la la la. Anyway, so yeah, India, China, Delhi, Hong Kong, Shenzhen. It's a big old slep. Uh, my kitchen units are blackened by F and B with white tiles. Really want to warm up as a moment. It's just white. I have griddle style windows off kitchen before I screen sofa. Can you help? So your kitchen units are black with white tiles really want to warm walls up. I would, I know I keep going on about a burnt toffee, but that would just look so beautiful, those combination and the forest green sofa. So beautiful. Never thought of shadow. Honestly, yes, Mama Shelter takes hounds. There you go. Mama Shelter is right next to Columbia Road, very near it. Um, there is a book called, I think, The Importance of Shadow, or it, anyway, sh I can't tell you the importance of shadow. It's fundamental. It creates magical interiors and too many of us overlight things. Like we just have to think we are not in a hospital, please God. Um, and we want lots of pockets of glow. Those regional sleps can be exhausting. They are. What about a line of, uh, what about a line of spot ceiling lights off glow along all the curtains in a huge reception room? One wall light in a niche in general lighting. No, I don't think I could do that in a living room. I don't want any lights really coming Mm, I feel that that wouldn't work for me. Pot, uh, burnt toffee with greens, yum. What accessory soft furnishings goes well with baked clay? Everything, baked clay is such a neutral color. It's kind of a bit warmer than this. You can put greens with it, you can put um, browns with it, you can put pinks with it, you can put any color with it. It's a neutral, it's a soft, beautiful neutral. Anything goes from burnt orange to dirty pink, from pickle, anything, 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 anything. What are you trying to do, Wurtz? 
tips? Tips on interior designing. I mean, where to begin? <laughs> There's a lot of tips on interior designing. Um, spotlights are quite difficult. They are. They are quite difficult, unfortunately, unless you get a really narrow beam and they're always on dimmers. And where I've got spotlights in the ceiling, they're on multiple circuits, so I can really adjust the mood. I have a Ren Cashmere kitchen with high gloss units, dining area, also kitchen. Okay, I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, what colour walls? Um, I don't quite know what that is, I'm afraid. A Ren Cashmere kitchen with high gloss units. You want to not have any more gloss if your units are glossy, because really, ideally, we don't want too much gloss in the kitchen. Because uh, you kind of don't want the units to be the star, no matter how cool the kitchen. You want the units to go away and everything else to be the star. So you want table lamps to be the star, or pendant over the unit to be a star, never really the cabinetry. So everything from now on go as matte as you possibly can to kind of dial down the gloss. And then um, I'm not sure, cashmere, I guess. I'm not, not kind of sure what colour that is. So I don't know what colour to suggest for your walls. Sorry, because I'm just not familiar with the kitchen. Um, but if you can go warm, the warmer, the more warm, I can't talk. The warmer color you can apply to your walls, the warmer the color is, the cooler it will be. I don't mean as in cooling, I mean the better it will be. Uh, if you drench a room, would you recommend using eggshell woodwork and walls all the same? No, if you drench a room, all the uh, plaster should all the should be an emulsion and anything in woodwork should be in an eggshell and basically there's hardly any difference between eggshell and emulsion other than it's a bit more hard wearing and it will have the lowest sheen so you won't really tell think of redecorating my walls are cream and i have quite bright wallpaper on the chimney breast the floors are dark brown what would work with the floor please um greens would look lovely with your dark brown floor i mean a really soft beautiful green would look amazing as would a lovely calico we had a colour called Fog, which had a bit of pink in it, or a prastery tone, which would also look really beautiful with those floors. Uh, when would you say would be the perfect time to visit the store? Difficult to stay away, to be honest, but heading into Christmas. Gosh, probably end of October, beginning of November. What about rugs in the bathroom? Mine is black and white with no windows, but I need to make it cosy. Any ideas? I have rugs in the bathroom. I literally step out of the bath onto a towel and it's completely fine. Um, I would totally do it. I don't do any consulting sessions, sorry, have no time. Literally running the biz takes all my time and the lives kind of on my consulting sessions. What colour of windows would you put with millboard limed oak wood exterior cladding? Seaside location. Black! Beautiful! You know how in New York they've got like these black windows? So beautiful. I actually wondered about picking out my window frame in black, depending on what colour my walls are. Nice combo. Really, really nice combo. Um, five to 12, where did that hour go? What colors are good for conservatory to get lots of sun? Oh my goodness, because it's a conservatory and probably right near the garden, I would really consider warm, earthy, greeny browns because there's a real connection. Conservatories or any rooms that are butt onto gardens, you really want this connection between indoor and outdoor. So using colors that you find in nature in the adjoining room will always work. What color curtains would you put in a glass? Concrete light or dark? Hmm, hard one. I'm having the same dilemma. Tempted with dark for grounding purposes. You know, I was listening to this video today by Rita Connig. I don't know if you know Rita Connig. Um, House and Garden have done a video of her London apartment. She has a very different style to me, but I respect and like what she does. And she was saying that sometimes you need to throw rooms off. You don't want rooms to feel too perfect where every color flows into every color you need to throw rooms a little bit off and I thought that's a really good point actually sometimes you just need to give it a little bit of a oomph to make it a little bit edgier which is why maybe black or dark what color curtains would you put in or answer that what type of paint did you use to paint the floor um no we used to sell eggshell I'm uh, sorry used to sell floor paint and then our paint factory stopped it and so we've still got floor paint and sometimes they use eggshell and just put rugs over because eggshell isn't hard wearing for floors. Um, and I put rugs over so I don't ever have to varnish it. I like the black combo. Um, I haven't, I used to have a lot of lime wash paint from Bowick in my house. I've kind of gone off of that a bit because I just have, I've kind of gone a bit more textural. Not that I've gone off it because I didn't like it. I've just got quite a lot of art and I don't find it works so well with art. Um, but it's beautiful. I just don't want that in the bedroom. I kind of want to ramp up the textures just a little bit more. 
Anyway, I hope wherever you are in the world, it is uh, not raining. And um, thanks so much for the live session. Oh, it's part of your self-care routine. Thank you. Uh, kids are being fed. I'm about to whiz up my butternut creamy soup. Can't wait, can't wait. And um, hi from Adelaide. Named a light after Adelaide. Um, especially that terracotta Australian earthy vibe. Lovely. And have an amazing Sunday. And I will see you next Sunday. Bye, everyone. Bye.